What's going on guys? My name is Roberto and today we're going to be talking about the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I'm going to be doing a unboxing of the knife and I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of what I like about this knife and how I learned about this specific knife. Let's unbox this guys. So in the box you'll obviously get the knife. Next you'll get a little letter from Spyderco basically saying that this is a Blade HQ exclusive knife. It's a paramilitary 2 model with a Tonto blade, S30V steel, etc, etc. So you get that. Next you also get a Spyderco brochure with all of the history of the paramilitary 2 and the family of the paramilitary. And other than that, that's pretty much it. With this unboxing, I'm not the biggest fan of Spyderco's packaging. I've seen other brands like Protec and Benchmade revamp their packaging and it's a lot better than what they used to have. And I feel like Spyderco is kind of lacking in that department. So, not the biggest fan of unboxing, but I do appreciate good packaging as well. It's not a big deal breaker to me, but that little extra step kind of really shows that the company is trying to put out something pretty good as far as, you know, quality. So nonetheless, I'm going to be showing you guys the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and here it is. I got the all black version. I believe there are four versions total. So I'll try and put them up on the screen, but I believe you're going to have the black handle with the satin steel. You're going to have the black handle with the black steel. You're gonna have the clear G10 handles uh, with satin steel and with the black steel as well. One thing I've noticed with Spyderco is that they haven't been releasing as many paramilitary two Tontos. I'm not too sure why that is. I wouldn't be surprised if they just wanna do limited runs on them, which is completely fine. I got my hands on one, so I'm not complaining. But it would be nice to see different variants out there, aside from the other three that they just came out with. So anyways, back to the story. The way I saw this Paramilitary 2 was when Blade HQ interviewed Spyderco and Eric Lesser pretty much showed us a pre-model, pre-production Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Tonto. And the biggest thing with me was when I first saw that blade was that I just fell in love with it. I already knew that the handle would fit really good in my hands. Uh, just because I have a paramilitary 2. So from that moment on when I saw the paramilitary 2, I just thought, man, this thing has so many lines and just looks really good and really sharp. And I am a really huge fan of Tonto blades myself. So when they, you know, mentioned this at, in the video in Blade Show last year, I was just mind blown. I mean, I was obsessed with this knife and I think a lot of other people were. There was a lot of hype on this specific model. And, you know, after using it, after having it, I I understand the hype, but I feel like it was almost a little bit overhyped in my opinion. I think Spyderco should have done a better job with upgrading materials, including, you know, maybe a different handle material as well. But Anyways, here's my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Like I had mentioned earlier, this thing fits really good in my hands. I don't know if it's hard to tell on camera, but I have large hands. Um, every time I use the latex gloves or whatever, I get size large because, well, that's the size of my hands. So anyways, this Paramilitary 2 Tonto just fits really good in my hands. It's really good to purchase on and get a really good hold of the knife. The jimping in the back right here also helps a lot. I usually put my thumb right on that jimping to get a better grip as well. One thing with the Paramilitary 2 that I do like as well is that it has jimping up here on the bottom of the blade. And they've rounded this out so that you can get an even higher purchase on the knife. And you can put your index finger right up here and you can use that knife like that as well. So I'm gonna go with the pros really quick. There's not that many, but you know, I figured I'd mention it. I've already kind of mentioned it earlier in this video, but pros in my opinion were that 
mainly it's going to be a new blade shape. Like I said, I love Tontos. I don't mind any other style blades, but I love Tontos. So the fact that Spyderco finally came out with a Tonto blade for their Paramilitary 2 was awesome. I do like the lines on here. It has a hollow point edge that turns into a flat grind edge at the tip. It's going to have a couple of other lines as well. It's going to taper on the top of the or on the back of this blade, I should say. So, really great knife. I really like it. Um, next, we'll just go to the cons. Uh, one thing I did notice right off the bat when I received my knife was that it was just a, the slightest bit heavier than the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And I actually have this Paramilitary 2 right here. This one is an S110 V Steel. So, Really great knife. I love this knife. This is the first paramilitary two that I had. Uh, the second one that I got is the Tonto. But nonetheless, the Tonto is just a tad bit heavier than the standard model. So that was one thing I noticed right away. Another thing, and again, I've mentioned this before, so um, another con, in my opinion, is that this knife, in my opinion, should have been a little bit more better with materials, I should say. For $200, I think that it's kind of, I don't want to say it's BS, but you would expect something different than your standard paramilitary 2 when you spend 200 bucks on a knife and you kind of just get the same materials, just different blade style. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that, you know, if they had messed around and made like my Carta scales or, you know, if they got, would have gone with a different steel, that would have been better than the standard S35V, or I'm sorry, S30V steel. I would have been a lot happier about that for the price as well. Um, another thing, this is a small thing, I don't really think this is a deal breaker either, but the, the compression lock in the back wasn't painted the same color as the knife which is kind of disappointing in a sense um you it's hard to tell on online and on blade hq's website but you can't see the compression lock that good in the in the pictures so it kind of sucks that you know this wasn't painted black as well but i do understand why they did that um this is probably one of the most used parts of the knife so even if I feel like if they were to coat it as well or color it the same color as the knife this would eventually fade um, so that wouldn't look that good either but it would have been very nice to have that match the color of the knife as well other than that I don't have any other complaints this is a really great knife my my thoughts on buying one of these is I'd kind of wait it out a little while, see if they drop in price. I wouldn't pay $200 for this if you're interested in one. I believe, you know, they're going to come out with other models as well. So hopefully the price should go down just a tad bit. If it stays the same, then I would like to see them use different materials on the knife just to make things a little bit, you know, more understanding when you're paying that price for the knife. and. Last thing is the pocket clip. I love the pocket clips on these paramilitary twos. I love that they have this lip, this open lip here. Makes it really easy to just slide in your pocket really quick. And other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you liked this video, if you learned anything, or if you'd want me to do something else in these videos, or talk about any other, anything else. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.